At that moment, some other adventurers came to harass Leta. Ken chose not to get involved and let them fight on their own. The gang leader tried to draw his sword, but Cloud returned to scare them off. Cloud was very impressed with Ken's dodging ability and introduced himself. Cloud explained that his guild was called Ice Fire because he used a fire sword and his wife used ice magic. Cloud was rank A and had a gold card, but the highest rank was rank S which had a black card. As Cloud was talking, his wife came and hit him, reminding him to take on a mission immediately. Ken explained that Cloud had saved him, so Cloud's wife let him off. Ken then took on several missions to raise his rank and was very happy to see a mission to exterminate goblins in the eastern forest. However, Tifana, who knew Ken's intentions, wanted to join him. The deputy captain tried to stop her, but Tifana handed over all her duties to the deputy captain and went with Ken. Tifana felt very happy to go with Ken, considering it a romantic day. When they arrived at the location, they saw a broken carriage and someone surrounded by goblins. Ken and Tifana immediately took action. Tifana slew many goblins with her sword, but their numbers were still large, so Ken used his magic to enhance Tifana. With the added power, Tifana managed to defeat the goblins. However, there were still some lizard monsters they had to face. Ken asked Tifana to take the injured person to a safe place while he used his magic to defeat the monsters. Ken returned to the adventurer's guild to report his mission. Leta was surprised because lizard monsters were very strong and rarely anyone could defeat them. Ken was called to the office to meet Leta's superior, who accused him of cheating. Leta tried to explain, but the superior did not want to listen. Ken almost lost his adventurer card, but the guild leader, who was Tifana's older brother, came and resolved the issue. The guild leader recognized Ken as the knight who once saved the princess and the young lady and planned to marry Tifana. Ken was given rank C as compensation, but Tifana asked for a higher rank because Ken could defeat a fire dragon at a young age. Finally, Ken was given rank A. The guild leader advised Ken always to treat Tifana well. On the other hand, the gods were worried about Ken's increasingly powerful strength. The creator god hoped Ken would become stronger because a great enemy sealed last year would soon return. The god also planned a new teacher to train Ken. The next morning, Sylvia the maid panicked because Ken was late for the entrance exam to the Magic Academy. Ken calmed Sylvia by saying he could teleport to the academy. After that, he received his exam number and entered the exam room. Ken remembered his past so well that he only needed half an hour to complete the exam. Even the teacher was surprised, but Ken was very confident in his answers and didn't need to check them again. After finishing the written exam, the students proceeded to the magic ability assessment. Their task was to use magic to hit a target. The teacher reminded them to use their magic freely since the area was protected by a defensive barrier. While the other students used small spells, Ken initially planned to use a large fire spell but decided to reduce its power to avoid scaring them. However, Ken's magic still surprised the teacher, and his spell not only hit the target but also broke through the barrier and destroyed the wall behind it. Despite looking innocent, everyone around could only gape, and the teacher had to step outside to ensure no one was harmed. The next exam was swordsmanship, supervised by high-ranking adventurers. Ken recognized one of them but didn't want to fight him. However, since Cloud was the chief examiner, Ken would fail if he refused. So, Ken reluctantly picked up a sword and sparred with Cloud. Their speed was so fast that the other students couldn't see anything. Cloud no longer considered Ken a student and increased his speed to match Ken's. Meanwhile, the teacher reminded them to stop because the other students were nearly fainting from fear. Seeing that Ken was too powerful, the teacher decided Ken didn't need to take any more exams and sent him home. When the exam results were announced, Sylvia, the maid, was delighted to hear that Ken had passed. Since Ken hadn't eaten that morning, his stomach growled, so Sylvia quickly prepared food for him. The next day, Ken had to go to the king to receive a reprimand for accidentally destroying the Magic Academy's barrier. Ken explained that he had only used basic magic, but the wall still broke. Despite this, the king and others were still angry, so Ken promised not to do it again. The king then asked why Ken hadn't taken the exam with the princess and her guard. Ken realized he had mistakenly registered at the south gate, meant for regular students, instead of the north gate for nobles. This mistake left the king and others speechless. The headmaster also reported to Eric that a common youth had achieved perfect scores on the exam, destroyed the training arena, and fought on par with an A-class adventurer. Hearing this, Eric laughed, knowing it must be Ken. The headmaster then presented the repair and reconstruction costs, which would be covered by the prime minister. The king warned Ken to be more careful in the future. After that, Ken returned to the academy to see his exam results, and of course, Ken was the top student. The second and third places went to Tara and Silk. Silk informed Ken that the princess was very angry because he hadn't shown up that day. Ken didn't know how to apologize to the princess, but he suddenly met his older sister, whom he hadn't seen in a long time. His sister hugged Ken tightly, expressing how much she missed him. She told Ken that since he was the top student, he would have to give a speech in front of the entire school. 
Ken wanted to allow Tara, but he couldn't. At home, Sylvia was very worried about Ken's exam results, but when Ken told her he passed as the top student, Sylvia was overjoyed and planned a big party to celebrate. The next day, Ken went to the academy for the opening ceremony. His parents attended, as did two girls who always wanted to be with Ken. Seeing Ken's good fortune, others felt envious. The headmaster began the ceremony and called Ken to give a speech as the top student. Ken admitted that he had mistakenly entered the wrong room during the exam, leaving his parents speechless. However, Ken still thanked the academy for forgiving his mistake. He promised to make friends with everyone and asked them to help each other. Although he finished his speech, Ken couldn't return to his seat because the king suddenly arrived at the ceremony. The king gave a speech urging the students to keep striving and not be reckless like Ken. After being scolded by the king, Ken finally returned to class. The class teacher entered and told the students to choose their majors before starting their studies. Ken immediately chose the adventurer major, but the two girls didn't allow it because Ken was a noble. So, Ken chose a more suitable major for nobles. Tara and Silk chose commerce and administration, so they could manage the country with Ken in the future. After the first lesson, Ken saw some noble children bullying his childhood friend, Panmer. Because Panmer was from a common background, he was threatened by those children. When Ken arrived, they were shocked to learn that Panmer was Ken's friend. Although Ken was a noble, the leading child wasn't afraid and threatened to keep bullying Panmer. At that moment, Silk and Tara overheard everything, and the children became very frightened. They apologized to the princess, Ken, and Panmer, and left in shame. Ken then apologized to Panmer for arriving late, but Panmer was very happy to see Ken again. They weren't in the same class, but when Ken was seen getting close to other girls, the princess and other noble girls became jealous. They forced Ken to kneel and happily talk with Panmer. At that moment, Ken heard a strange voice asking him to come to the library for a meeting. When Ken arrived and opened the door, he was suddenly transported to an unfamiliar place, a room where a man named Yura was making coffee. Yura was the first king of this world and also from another world like Ken. Yura explained that he was sent by the creator god to train Ken. Although Ken felt he was already very strong, he agreed to be tested by Yura. Ken still lost one level below Yura. Yura told him that there would be a dangerous enemy named the Dark God Aaron, who once spread terror by making people distrust each other and start wars. Yura and his comrades had once imprisoned Aaron, but the seal was weakening. As a god, Yura could no longer fight Aaron, so he asked Ken to do it. Ken felt Yura was just trying to escape his responsibilities. Yura promised to reveal the secrets of Ken's previous life if Ken succeeded in his training. Ken was very curious about that secret, but Yura gave him a compass and said that one year here was equivalent to one day in the real world, so he could train freely. Currently, his main task was to level up, as only then could he defeat Eren. After that, Yura returned to his mansion, leaving Ken behind. From that moment on, Ken was determined to kill monsters to level up, to the point of forgetting the days in the outside world. The girls were very worried because almost a day had passed and Ken hadn't returned to school. The servants feared Ken had been captured or kidnapped, but Princess Tara was not worried and decided to wait for Ken at her home. Ken had spent months killing monsters there. His body was very tired from never having a good night's sleep. However, Ken kept pushing himself to complete his mission. As his consciousness began to fade, he met a wounded wolf. Ken intended to end its suffering with his sword, but he suddenly remembered his former self, who was always kind and helpful to others. Finally, Ken used his remaining magic to heal the wolf, then fainted. The wolf then guarded Ken until he regained consciousness. When he woke up, Ken was deeply moved that the wolf had stayed by his side. Ken decided to make the wolf his companion and named it Haku. From that moment on, they were always together, even when fighting monsters. A year later, Ken had matured and finally found his way back to Yura's mansion. Seeing Ken with a new companion, Yura identified Haku as a mystical creature named Fenrir. On his teacher's advice, Ken made a pact with Haku so he could summon him anytime to fight together. However, Ken's training was not over because he got a new teacher named Doran, Yura's comrade. During training, Ken was hit hard by Doran and passed out. When he woke up, Ken found himself at Doran's house, meeting Doran's wife. They invited Ken to lunch, which made Ken very happy after not eating a good meal for so long. Meanwhile, at Ken's house, the girls were being taught by Syria how to bake, hoping to make something delicious for Ken when he returned. Ken continued his physical training with Doran, coming home exhausted every day. After a year, Ken had made significant progress. He recalled a secret Iura had told him, that Eren was initially the god of this world's games but used his power to force people into deadly games. As a result, Eren was banished from the world of gods. However, when Eren rises again, the deadly games will start anew. Iura couldn't protect his comrades, who turned out to be Ken's parents in the old world. Yoga, along with Ken's parents, was summoned to this world and tasked by the gods to seal Eren in a crystal ball they created. However, they couldn't defeat the immensely powerful Eren. 
Ken's mother was killed by Aaron's arrow, and Ken's father sacrificed himself to hold Aaron back so Yoga could seal him. Knowing his parents' sacrifices, Ken grew stronger. Finally, Ken managed to break Doran's sword and defeat him, concluding his training. Ken returned to Ira's place to visit his parents' graves. Ira said that Ken's parents always worried about him, even as the battle with Aaron drew closer. They continued to search for a way back to the old world. Ken felt deeply moved and grateful to his parents and to Ira, who had always been with him. Ira invited Ken for coffee, but Ken wanted to return to his world immediately. Ira used magic to restore Ken to his original form after a year in this world. Before leaving, Doran gave Ken a dragon as a companion, and Ira gave him a sword to present to the king. Ken returned home after being missing for a few days, and the girls were delighted to see him back safely. They made lots of cakes to welcome him, knowing it was his favorite food. Ken ate happily, touched by their care. The next day, Ken went to see the king to report that he had met the first king, Yoga, and to deliver the sword Yoga had entrusted to him. Ken also recounted his year-long training and the monsters he had defeated. The king found the story unbelievable, as Ken had only been gone for a few days. Afraid of the king, Ken didn't know how to explain where he had been. At that moment, Eric reminded Ken that he hadn't completed the task to rank up to in the Adventurer's Guild. Ken quickly ran there, worried he was late. When he met the guild master, he was told that Tifana had missed him greatly. Fortunately, that day was the last day to accept the task, so Ken wasn't late. His task was to eliminate a group of bandits frequently appearing on the road to the capital. With Ken's strength, defeating them was easy. Ken immediately teleported to the bandits' location and saw them surrounding a group of people, including Millie and Mina protecting Pamra's father. Seeing Millie injured, Ken used healing magic and became furious. He attacked the bandits and defeated them effortlessly. After tying up the bandits, Ken showed his gold adventure card and explained that he was on a rank promotion task. This surprised Millie and Mina because Ken, still young, had a higher rank than them. They returned to the capital with the bandits, greeted with admiration by the townspeople. Pamra thanked Ken for saving his father, and Millie admired how much Ken had grown since she had taught him. After saying goodbye, Ken returned to the Adventurer's Guild and handed the bandit capture confirmation letter to Ladilia. At that moment, some people who had previously harassed his teachers reappeared but were now scared of seeing Ken. At the same time, Cloud and his wife returned from their mission. It turned out that Minnie, one of Ken's teachers, was Cloud's sister. One day, Cloud suggested the whole group have a drinking party. After that, Millie recounted how she had met Ken by chance while protecting someone, and with just a few moves, Ken had defeated the robbers. Mina mentioned that Ken had just been promoted to a rank, but with his strength, Cloud wasn't too surprised since Ken could fight on par with him without using magic. Millie's teacher then asked Ken why he was so strong, but Ken couldn't reveal that he had been trained by a god. Millie also mentioned that Ken had given her and Nina a magic bag, and Nina claimed that the bag could even hold a mansion. Linda, hearing this, eagerly wanted Ken to make a similar bag for her. Being drunk, Ken promised to make one, making Linda very happy and hug Ken tighter than her husband. At that moment, Ken remembered he hadn't gone to school that day, so he had to leave immediately. Before leaving, Nina also wanted to hug Ken, but he managed to escape. However, the receptionist Lesha informed them that the adventurer group assigned to teach Ken's class was injured and needed replacements. Cloud then volunteered to replace them and teach Ken's class. The first lesson was magic, and the student's task was to cast their magic at a target, but the teacher didn't allow Ken to participate due to his overwhelming power, fearing he might destroy the barrier like before. From a distance, Cloud looked a bit worried that Ken would be ostracized by his teacher and classmates, so they decided to do something to help Ken. The next lesson would be taken over by the four of them. Before starting the lesson, Cloud asked the students to show their adventure cards. Only Ken was reluctant to show his gold card, so he asked Cloud to forgive him, fearing that if he showed his gold card, the whole class would focus on him. Cloud insisted, so Ken had to excuse himself by saying he forgot to bring it. Seeing Ken unable to mingle with the class made them worried, so they decided to use a new trick. The next lesson was swordsmanship and magic. Ken was looking forward to this lesson because he could fight a bit but the students took swords one by one to fight Cloud while Ken could only watch. On the magic side, Ken wasn't allowed to participate either. They planned to first show the students their strength and eventually allow Ken to demonstrate his power in front of the class. Seeing Ken's strength, the students would surely make him a hero. However, when it was finally his turn to perform, the bell signaling the end of the lesson rang, leaving Ken in tears. That night, Ken went to the monster forest to vent his anger. He easily defeated all kinds of monsters, even using his magic, making the soldiers think a demon king had appeared in the forest. The terrified villagers prayed immediately, while Ken's father rushed to the forest to see what was happening. After venting, Ken returned home. When his father arrived at the scene and saw Ken's scarf, he immediately realized the culprit was his son. The next morning, Ken was summoned to the palace by the king, who told him about the appearance of a demon king in the forest. 
The king asked Ken if he knew anything about it. But Ken, scared, answered very suspiciously, making the king realize the truth and start questioning him. On the other side, the evil god Aaron had managed to escape his seal and began regaining his power. Meanwhile, Ken was attending a summoning magic class. Since it wasn't offensive magic, his teacher allowed Ken to participate. The summoning magic teacher, Girat, told the students there were two types of summoning magic, the first was contracting with an existing monster, and the second was summoning a monster from a magic circle. Although Ken already had two pets, that day he would learn how to contract with a monster from a magic circle. The other students could only summon small animals, and the largest beast quickly disappeared because the summoner didn't have enough magical power. When it was Ken's turn, he listened to his teacher's instructions and channeled a lot of magical energy into the magic circle. His teacher felt something was wrong, and it turned out that Ken had summoned the demon king of that world. Upon hearing this, Ken immediately used magic to blind everyone around him. He didn't expect to summon such a powerful creature. The demon king used his appraisal power to assess Ken, then walked toward him with a rather terrifying face but then immediately knelt. It turned out the demon king realized that Ken was a messenger of the gods and wanted to make a contract with him. Ken did not expect everything to end like that. The demon king, whose name was Sato, said that if Ken wanted to destroy the kingdom, he just needed to give the order. After the demon king disappeared, Ken hurriedly explained to his teacher that what appeared earlier was just an ordinary warrior, but his teacher knew it was the real demon king. Ken was then summoned by the king to explain. In front of the king, Ken could no longer lie, so he admitted that he had summoned the demon king. The king and everyone there were very surprised. The king was worried that the demon king might go on a rampage and destroy the kingdom at any time. Although Ken had made a contract with the demon king, the king remained worried. His teacher then wondered how much magical power Ken had to be able to summon the demon king. Ken showed his status, and everyone was shocked to see that he had the title of demigod. His teacher immediately knelt before Ken, realizing that he was the reincarnation of a god, while the king begged Ken not to destroy his kingdom. Seeing the king so worried, Ken reassured him by saying he just wanted to live an ordinary life. The king then ordered Girat to keep everything secret and told Ken that he would be promoted to nobility, which meant Ken could choose a city to manage and protect. The king also saw this as a test for Ken to eventually lead the entire kingdom. Ken's servant, Sylvia, was very happy to hear that Ken would lead a region. While preparing for the celebration party, the housekeeper came with a message that many monsters had appeared in the forest near Ken's home. When Ken arrived at the place, he saw the frightened residents fleeing the city. Meeting his brother, Jin, he was told that since last month, many adventurers had been attacked by monsters in that forest. Jin was worried that if this continued, the monsters would invade the city as they had years ago. Ken decided to go to the forest and investigate himself, even though Jin felt that as a noble, Ken should not do that. However, Ken showed his adventurer card and said he would handle the matter. After successfully defeating a large dragon, Ken told his friend not to worry. Ken then went to the adventurer's guild and met the receptionist Yachty again. He reported that he would enter the monster forest to investigate, as many people were being attacked by monsters there. At the same time, Ken met his two teachers again. Nina informed Ken that the guild had sent many high-level adventurers to the monster forest because the monsters were getting stronger and more aggressive. Therefore, it was now necessary to enter into groups. Millie was waiting for her brother, Cloud, to go together. However, Ken wanted to enter alone to investigate first, so he said goodbye to everyone. Once inside the forest, Ken summoned his two pets, who then got jealous because they both loved their master. At that moment, Ken sensed a monster watching him from a distance. He killed several monsters around him to find out but found nothing. Finally, Ken summoned the Demon King for help. The Demon King appeared fierce but immediately became obedient when he saw Ken. The Demon King sensed a very strong creature in the forest that was attracting high-level monsters there. Ken worried that the creature would attack the city. The Demon King planned to summon one of the four heavenly kings, Danmesha, who was very skilled in investigation. When Danmesha saw Ken, he immediately prostrated himself, knowing Ken was a messenger of the gods. Ken had no time to play around, so he urged everyone to investigate quickly. Danmesha used his special power to summon bats that made monsters emerge from the ground. Ken killed them one by one, watched in awe by Danmesha, who finally saw the power of a god's messenger. Danmesha felt fortunate that Ken was an ally, otherwise he would be annihilated. Ken then brought the pile of monsters he had killed to the adventurer's guild. Everyone was worried about seeing so many monsters because if they attacked, the city could be destroyed. Then Mesha found a creature hiding in the forest, sending threats to keep people away. The demon king and his followers were not afraid and went deeper to meet the creature. Aaron, the creature, sent many monsters, so the demon king had to return to Ken to report that the monsters were ready to attack. Ken asked Cloud and the others to defend the city while he and the demon king went to the forest to meet Aaron. On the way, Ken met Tifana, who was riding a horse to meet her husband. 
Ken asked Tifana to guard their home, and she agreed. Ken and the Demon King quickly headed to the forest, while Damatia continued to kill dragons, waiting for Ken's return. Once Ken arrived, he unleashed Hellfire to attack the monsters. Ken realized his enemy was the Dark God Aaron, who was using the body of a black dragon. Although his body was not fully recovered, Aaron was very strong and continued to strengthen the monsters with magic. Behind, the Demon King's forces were overwhelmed by the number of monsters, so they had to ask for help from Cloud's group. Nina, with her magic, reported that the monsters were approaching, and she and Lena used magic to help Cloud and Millie fight. After a while, Mina was almost out of strength, and Lena asked Cloud and Millie to run for their safety. However, Cloud could not leave his wife and friends, so he and Millie were determined to fight until the end. Fortunately, Tifana arrived in time to help because the city's defenses were finished. Tifana decided to fight with them. The Dark God Aaron was furious to learn that Ken's parents had sealed him in the past and continuously attacked Ken. His attacks were so strong that they burned his monsters. Ken was not afraid and attacked back with Hellfire, although Aaron's body was unaffected. Ken increased his power, but Aaron attacked faster. Ken summoned Haku and Gim to help him. Aaron attacked Haku, knocking him down. Gim protected Haku, while Ken could not let his pets die, so he deflected Aaron's magical attack. Ken was determined to use all his power to protect those he loved. In an instant, Ken increased his magic to the maximum level, reminding Aaron of the magic Ken's father used to defeat him in the past. Finally, Aaron was thrown and disappeared. The battle created a large pillar of light that left everyone in awe. Ken thought Aaron was still alive and continued to attack until the Demon King and his followers arrived and told him that Aaron was gone. Although Ken explained about the Black Dragon, no one believed him because Aaron had vanished, so the monsters returned to the forest. Ken returned safely, warmly welcomed by everyone who hugged him to celebrate the victory. The Demon King secretly thanked the gods for sending a kind messenger. The next day, Ken was summoned by the king, who asked about the pillar of light that made his people prostrate. Ken explained that it happened because he fought the Black Dragon and accidentally used god-level magic. He also summoned the Demon King and his army to aid in the battle. Upon hearing these two things, the king was so frightened that he wanted to resign, but first, he had to reward Ken. For his achievements, Ken was promoted to a noble and given his territory. However, since the area was full of adventurers, Tifana and the others were very worried. But for Ken, the job of being an adventurer was something he loved very much, so there was no problem. The next morning, Ken set off for Green Town, the place the king had given him to manage. Upon arrival, he was greeted by several adventurers with jungle law tactics. However, within seconds, Ken destroyed the battle arena and taught the adventurers a lesson in his way. Eventually, Ken was arrested by the guards in Dream for causing a commotion. The king, upon hearing this story, could only remain silent. Ken was then released and recounted the incident to Tears and Silk. Just then, the Demon King came to seek Ken's help because he had been kicked out by his wife. It turned out that the Demon King had been unfaithful, so his wife came from the Demon World to the Human World. After greeting Ken, the Demon King's wife asked what Ken thought about men who cheat like the Demon King. Ken immediately replied that cheating was an unforgivable sin. Tears and Silk agreed and said that the Demon King was a bad man. Hearing this, the Demon King's wife felt very relieved. But she did not forget to threaten Ken that if he made these two girls cry, he would have to face the consequences. After that, they said their goodbyes and returned to the Demon World. Meanwhile, the king was informed that Ken was building something very large in his territory. It turned out that Ken had just designed a castle, but because it was a bit excessive, the castle was bigger than the king's castle, leaving both Ken and the king speechless. 